a few days ago i was talking to a friend of mine about passions and hobbies and things you like or things you find peace and fun in and we sort of got to a point where we realized that neither of us really find a lot of joy or excitement in some of the things that we used to absolutely love um it is not just a lack of excitement but rather just a complete disinterest in those things and when we kept the call just started thinking about this thing in general about why does this happen where things we were so fond of at one point in our lives just suddenly seem mundane and meaningless and more of something you have to do rather than something you want to do what causes that shift and i know a lot of people go through this like it i don't think it's just an age factor i think it's very easy to just push it away by saying you grow old you grow up and things like that but i think if someone can feel like this and by someone i mean me who can go from a complete interest in something to a complete lack thereof in the span of a few months it it's not really about age is it so yeah i started i started thinking about this in detail and i think i came to a realization that when you go through life changing events and i think you know what i'm talking about if you listen to the previous one and life changing events could be anything it could range from personal things to professional things to family related things to work whatever it could be anything and yeah when you go through a life changing event it's difficult to just revert back to life with the same sense of excitement and happiness as before and by extension things that you used to do i don't think there's anything wrong with that because whoever said that we need to be exactly who we were before the said event but i i still wasn't satisfied enough with this explanation because i am not personally ready to let go of the things that i used to once love because i have worked towards them for years and to just give up on them seemed a little ridiculous to be very honest with you to put it bluntly so then the next step was to understand how to rediscover your passion for something and i i obviously turned to youtube to see if people could relate to that and there are tons and tons of people unfortunately who can really relate to this scenario and i think the most common answer i found was just to give it some time to take a break emotionally mentally work wise everything just to take a break to perhaps do something completely different or not do anything at all till a point where you're itching to get back into something or to simply acknowledge the fact that you're never going to find fun in those activities again all of this did make a lot of sense to me but i started drawing my own conclusions and i think when people say that you have to have a purpose in life it's for good cause i i wasn't a great big believer in this and i still don't mean this philosophically that you need to have some goal for the greater good lined up so that your existence makes sense and i i really don't mean in any of those i don't mean it in that context but i think that if you have i'm i'm not talking about a goal but a purpose the reason behind why you're doing something i think then it's easier to get back into that routine into that activity to fall back in love with what you do because it's a process right it's a process to get back to where you were i truly believe in the power of why so i i teach communication and confidence building as one of the courses 
that I offer under my startup. And I have said this to my students time and, at, and time and time again about harnessing the power of why. We're so busy with the what and the how and we rarely pay any attention to the why. Why are we doing something? Why are we invested in something? Why are we fond of something? Why do we even exist? Without the why, it's really difficult to stick to stick to something to get through it if you're if you're trying to get fit for example and you don't know the reason behind you doing it it's very easy to just quit after a week because your body hurts and your muscles are sore and your your why has to be a solid one it cannot be a frivolous one so your why behind getting fit just cannot be because i want to look thin at a particular event yeah it's a short lived goal and you will probably achieve it but you will not be able to sustain it because to sustain something you really have to have a concrete reasoning behind it some driving factor exactly what i mean by harnessing the power of why so if your goal for getting fit uh, sorry the if if the why behind getting fit for you is to be the healthiest you've ever been or perhaps to recover from an illness or perhaps you've seen someone go through something and you want to make sure that you do not go through it and thus you have to be physically fit those are long term high value reasons so the why behind your activity is so fixed so important that even when you feel like quitting when you feel like giving up when you feel disconnected you have something holding on to you over there and i think that's a very powerful thing so then i i started connecting these two things my general lack of interest in any of the things that i used to love and there are tons of things that i used to love and just suddenly not wanting to do any of it because i feel i feel stuck in a place and it i know the reason behind it and it's it's unhappiness that stems from a place of deep deep hurt but if you again heard the last one i said there will come a point where you choose you want to get better you are you're sick of feeling like this and though i am feeling like this and i i still cannot get myself to get back into my routine and get back to the things i love so i it started bugging me that i've reached a point where i've made that choice and yet here i am unable to get there why what is the reason behind it and that's when i started thinking about the purpose and the why behind what you do the way i see it i have three options and so do you one don't bother trying to get back into a routine either start off a totally new one or just take a break from everything like those videos that i just mentioned a little while back just taken off from everything and see where you go with that if nothing changes even after that in a little while maybe check out the other two points that i'm about to say the second thing i think i could do is dive head straight into something i think we spend so much time deciding and planning that we don't really give enough time for the execution we don't spare enough mental energy for the execution because we spend it all in the planning stage right so just just going all out creating say top 3 things that you want to get back into and setting goals for what you want to achieve in those 3 things you know something to look forward to so you have your reasoning but you also have your goals behind like goals set out and that's the second way that's you make bold statements that you're going to do this and you're going to do that and then you stick to it because it's all that you have to think about or the third third way about to go about it is just pick the tiniest thing of your routine your previous routine that you loved it's not even an activity that you've lost interest in i'm just talking about the routine like something like uh, brushing your teeth the minute you wake up if it's something you do or perhaps going for a walk or making yourself a cup of coffee or tea or any of that so just picking the smallest thing that you used to do in your previous routine and just restarting that nothing else nothing big nothing complicated because i think when you really try to do too many things at once our 
brain does not like complicated things and it it it's going to go into a nope i don't want to do that kind of a mode and that's what we're trying to avoid here so yeah i think the three things are take a complete off go all in or just pick the tiniest thing that you can incorporate i know for a lot of people it's the all in or all out approach and that's a whole new topic i don't think i want to talk about that right now but the the second point and third point i mentioned the second one is like an all or nothing thing and the third point that i just mentioned about the one tiny thing it's like um the slow and steady kind of a route that you can approach so for me if i have to think what would that be for me if i if i had to go through the i don't think i want to go through the first point where i don't do anything i think i've given myself enough time to not do anything and just give myself some time and space and i i am ready to get back into something because not getting into it is more troublesome at this stage so if i just look at the second and the third option the third second one the all in or all out i think i wouldn't mind making a list of top 3 things crazy things set really high goals to it like suppose if i if i start posting these the series on youtube i might make a crazy goal like post twice a week reach 1000 followers in one month subscribers sorry so that that's an insane goal right i think that's a really hard to achieve goal at least i think of it that way but just making these these setting these supposedly unattainable targets so that you have something pushing you something challenging you and i think humans thrive on challenges we just it's fun it's fun to come out of it especially if you're someone who's pretty confident about themselves being able to pull off things you would love this step right so this is the all in all all out approach and the third one is a minuscule thing if i were to go through that route i think i would just huh that's a tough one what would i restart from my old routine i think i would just restart reading after lunch so a little while back a few months back i had gotten into this really good habit that if i felt a little drowsy or sleepy after lunch and it i don't like sleeping in the afternoon and i also wanted to find some quality time to be able to read uh, combining these two things i would go and sit in the balcony my cat would always accompany me there and i would just sit there in the warmth and read the book now i know the act of reading really puts a lot of people to sleep and that's counteractive but it worked for me where i managed not to fall asleep after lunch i didn't feel sleepy and i gave myself some quality time to read then once i was done reading because i was reading books like atomic habits and um the subtle art of beep or attitude is everything i think they really inspired me to just get back to work the minute i closed the book so it it worked in so many ways so if i were to take the third route the third approach that i just mentioned i think i would the one small thing that i would bring back from my old routine was reading a book after lunch and just by starting that one minuscule thing from your previous routine you could get a sense of um what's the word i'm looking for a sense of belonging belonging to your own life not feeling so detached from everything and slowly over time you could start incorporating a few more things here and there till you rebuild yourself back up all of this sounds really easy and to be honest it's not i have done this so many times and i'm sure a lot of you listening to it have done it too that you create this schedule and you create this timetable and you listen to all these productivity videos and pump yourself all up but when it comes to actually doing it you don't end up doing it and you're like ah eh, tomorrow or monday or anything of that sort and i think that is the most frustrating thing you can do for yourself because now not only have you set yourself this goal and you've managed to screw it up in the very first attempt you're already starting in a negative mindset where you failed and that's a very difficult place to come out of from so applying any of these things that i just said they're not easy and they're going to take a lot of willpower and they or they might take 
finding a friend or a family member who's going to keep you accountable someone who really really checks or um me and a friend of mine we had done this challenge where we wanted to complete uh, certain kilometers in a month cycling and we had given this sum of money to other friends who would give it back to us if we completed the challenge or they would get to keep it for themselves if we failed at the challenge now truth be told seeing how life turned around at that point uh, i didn't end up completing the challenge but it definitely was a motivating factor at that moment so yeah these things are not easy but if you if you figure out a way to keep yourself in check they are doable the only question is how much do you want to do it and what just what we just said why do you want to do it really take a moment to figure out the why because without the why it's pretty pretty damn impossible to really do it something i'm trying to tell myself and hope you can tell yourself the same thing is because these things are so difficult you have to acknowledge the fact that it takes a toll on you emotionally so like i said in the last clip there are f- there are five stages of grief right we know them the anger denial denial anger sorry bargaining depression and acceptance but i think depression as a phase is the longest so if you are in a position the way i feel right now where you feel totally unmotivated you don't have any discipline you have no routine you have no will power you have no imagination you have no enthusiasm nothing you're probably going through that stage right now the depression stage and it does last a long time and it does suck and it's painful to say the least but you have to get through it in order to get through it so it's just something i'm repeating to myself that there's no shortcut and there's no you can't jump over it you can't duck under it you just have to go through it and i i say this to myself as a reminder that there is no hurry of any sort to have it all figured out what is this arbitrary concept of having your life figured out at a certain age it, there's there's no such thing because everyone is just doing their own thing there's no particular time frame so if you are going through the stage i think it's really important to cut yourself some slack and honestly by saying you need to figure it out i'm basically telling myself that it's it's okay to be this much of a scra- scatter brain right now and to take time to get life back on track i genuinely don't know if anything that i've said is even remotely relatable or helpful but again the just the same thing that i had said in the first clip this is selfishly for me for me to feel better because it's it's 1:30 at night again i prefer the night time to do this i have a candle on it's quiet the night time is a time that i've always loved but recently it's been a little haunted for me because my room feels so empty this recording session has been comforting so yes it's a pretty selfish endeavor but like they always say you cannot pour from an empty cup and i'm just trying to refill my cup at this point and i am so sure that so many of you are trying to do the same thing so whatever you're going through i hope you're okay with going through it to get through it and once you're on the other side whenever that is whatever that is it might be easier to look back and see how much you grew in the process i think that's just a happy byproduct of the whole thing so with that i would like to say thank you for listening if you still are here because again it's a it's another big one and i'm sorry if this was all over the place it was it's not rehearsed it's not planned out it's not scripted i'm just blabbering on as the thoughts pour in as they always do because overthinking is a real thing <laughs> and i think that's a whole new topic in itself for another time so thank you so much for listening to me if you still are here and um yeah my unfiltered thoughts 
for you. See you next time. Though I'm not really going to see you at all. So catch up with you next time. Bye-bye.